Thank you, everyone. So, um, first off, before I actually get started, at the uh, behest of my colleagues, I'm instructed I must do a selfie. A streaming selfie, it's called. So, with this newfangled technology, let's give everyone a wave. There we go. Try again. Look enthusiastic. There we go. <laughs> right. So, on to more serious matters. So, um, I'm Robin. I work for Confluence. Um, I'm going to talk for the next 40 minutes, give or take, um, about building streaming data pipelines with Kafka. So, the first most important thing, other than streaming selfies, is I get quite excited about Kafka and about KSQL, and I realize that not everyone's first language is English. So one of my colleagues, when I was doing a talk in Paris, gave me very good advice. She sat at the sideline, and she just went, slow down. So if I'm starting to go too fast, please just, just start doing that to me, and I'll try and kind of slow down. Because I'm from the north of the UK as well, so I've got a bit of an accent as well. So just do that. And uh, I'll not pick on you, I promise, just, and I'll slow down a bit. So I'm going to talk about how we actually build out these streaming data pipelines. But before I do that, I want to kind of set the scene for why we want to do that. Like, what's the point of building a streaming data pipeline? And to do that, I want to kind of tell a little story. So I want us to cast our minds back, way, 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 way back in time, when we built applications and we put a database underneath. I realize it's an old-fashioned concept, but bear with me. So we would want to process orders in our business, and we would have an orders application, and someone would place an order, and we would write it to a database. And this is good. We would be able to track things that are happening within our application. But even more useful would be if we could know what's happening in our business. So we've got our operational system here. But because we're good developers, we don't want to start hitting that operational database because it might slow it down. It might annoy the DBAs, and you don't want to annoy the DBAs. So we say, well, let's take this operational database here and let's do a batch extract from here over to here. And we'll say, now we have a data mart. Now we can actually analyze this data. And we'll say, well, we'll do it as a batch extract, maybe once a month, maybe once a week. We can get really fancy and do it once a day if we want to. But it's kind of slow. But we now have our data mart. And we say, well, let's denormalize some of these dimensions. Let's put the data into a format whereby which we can actually optimize it for reading rather than writing. We maybe want to cleanse the data a little bit, and so we write some transformation jobs. We say, well, copy the data across, and then transform it, and then like next week, we can find out what we sold last month. And someone else says, well, okay, so now you can tell us what's happening to our orders. But what about all the other systems? What about the warehousing systems? What about the merchandising systems? They've all got really valuable data as well. And much more useful than just being able to tell the sales team how many orders would be able to actually look across the business holistically and use the data that we've got in all these different places and bring it together. So we say, I can. Let's build ourselves a data warehouse. Well, let's rename it and call it a data lake and do it less well. So now we have our data, and we do a batch extract from here, and we copy it there. We do a batch extract, we copy it into here. And then we say, well, let's conform our dimensions. Let's make sure that when we're reporting across the enterprise, we're actually referring to the same things. We have the same measure definitions. We have the same meanings. When I say customer ID 42, it means the same as a customer ID 42 in another system as well. So we do all of this transformation work on the data as part of a batch process. And we have latency built in by design because it's batch driven. But it works, OK? So we can see what's happening in our business, but not really here and now. And then someone else says, well, you have all of this data in your data warehouse. You've done all of this great work on cleansing it and transforming it. This is super valuable. Okay? It's useful knowing what happened in the order system. It's even more useful knowing what happened across the business. So let's take that data, and rather than just like printing out reports off it, we'll still do that because people like it, but we'll actually use that data to drive other systems. Okay? It's the whole thing about actionable insights. It's a lovely buzzword, but it means something. Data has got use. We want to get use out of that data and we want to automate that. So we say, well, let's take our data that we brought in from here and here and here as part of a batch process and so on into our data warehouse. We transform it. We cleanse it. And then we say, well, let's take that data from our data warehouse, and we'll use it to drive these other systems over here. And then someone says, well, that data that you've got in your data warehouse, can we also use it to go and drive the search replica? And also, I've got a graph database that I'm playing around with on a server under my desk, or I guess in the cloud nowadays. Can we take that data from there and also copy it up there? Because it would also be useful. And before we know it, we end up with a spaghetti of all these different interconnected systems. 
And hopefully, if I ask for a show of hands, some people may recognize the kind of picture that I'm painting here. So let's give it a try. Does anyone? Come on, be honest, yeah? So maybe that's like 80% of the room. The rest of you gold star. But everyone else, these systems evolve over time. No one sets out to build it like this. It just kind of, it just happens. But there's actually a better way of doing things, okay? You can probably guess where I'm getting to with this. But there is a better way of doing things than building systems tightly coupled and battery-driven. You can actually build systems on a streaming platform. You can decouple your producers of data from your consumers of data. You can use Kafka as a streaming platform, not just a message broker, as a streaming platform. You can use it to persist your data. You can use it to transform your data. You can transform your data using the Kafka Streams API. This is a Java library, including your Java applications, and you can do some fantastically powerful stream processing with it. But I'm somewhat embarrassed to say I don't code Java. And if we do the whole show of hands thing again, you didn't realize it's going to be interactive, did you? Show of hands for who doesn't code Java. OK, a few. I'm not the only uh, fool. So if you don't code Java, you're kind of left out of the stream processing party. But now with KSQL, you can join in the fun. So what we're going to see today is how you can actually build out using Kafka, using the Kafka Connect API, using KSQL, you can actually build out a streaming ETL pipeline without needing to write any code. That's the title of this talk. No code for streaming pipelines.